Welcome back to another episode of Rave Next Door Garage. We're hanging out with oh. Matt the Ginge today. He is leaving for, what is that place? Uh, Lanier. For Lanier place. in Georgia for round four of East 10 Drift, Formula Drift Pro-Am. He's gonna win and then he's gonna get his Formula Drift Pro 2 license. This is his channel. And if you're a sponsor and you wanna sponsor him for next year for Pro 2 or the year after next, don't call him. <laughs> this is the list I have today for the van. I wrote it earlier, but he's mad because I did it in a Sharpie. <laughs> brake parts cleaner will get that off. You're gonna break the board, leave it alone. This is the list, Party Van 11, that is the hashtag. If you look it up on Instagram, you will see it. It's just the van right now, but it'll be better once we start taking it out to events. Air conditioner, secret compartment, which is what we're working on today. Welding and paint, wiring, which we will be working on uh, sometime this weekend. And then all this stuff, cabinets, intake, fridge, sink, fresh water, dirty water. That is a measurement for the secret compartment. Um, the LS3 has some fuel stuff in case you, you wanted to know. And the Miata, well, basically everything. If you haven't seen the previous video about the van, you should check it out. Uh, it's gonna be in the description below. And it is uh, the insulation and the paneling. Um, it was $170 for everything, including nails and screws and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, there's some developments with that that I will, mistakes that I made that I know I need to arrange and I will tell you guys about that later. Uh, if you wanna know about it, make sure you follow the channel because there's a lot of updates that are gonna be happening. And I'm gonna be learning as I go, just like I did with the last video. I got this two by four, 16 gauge sheet metal today. We're gonna be working on. Going to be cutting this side right here where these marks are. This is gonna be the bottom piece. And then it's pretty cool because these are two feet and my box coincidentally is about two feet all the way around. So I just need to cut the height. So I only get to have to do one cut as long as I measure it properly and I should be fine. I have this sheet and another one under there. You stalled it twice. I know, dude. It's because the idle when I lost the throttle. Oh yeah, it's because the idle. It's the idle, man. Where are you going? Day two, we got really tired yesterday. Jonathan's here today, Wang. He's hanging out, Oni's also here. And uh, we're working on the van already. I haven't shown you guys a lot of the van from the previous video. I will show you the whole front in a second, but for now, let me show you what I'm working in. This here is our secret compartment that we're trying to finish today. That uh, cord goes to one of the 110s over there. The other cord, this one, comes to this 110. And that's how we'll uh, get that done. I obviously built that frame I showed you guys in the previous video. So now we just gotta fill it in with uh, 16 gauge sheet metal and weld it all together so it's nice and sealed. Then we'll do a wood insulation and then the batteries can go in here, the inverter can go in here, the solar charger could go in here. Anything we want can go in here. Check this out, Wang. Wang Wang's first time seeing the van too. But this is it with the lights. Everything's in there. We already took it camping once. I didn't record it. Uh, we we're just testing and getting everything, just getting a feeler for everything. That's those lights. This is the other lights. You guys have seen that, I believe. Actually, no, you saw a picture of it. You never saw the video. Yeah, it's done. They all work. It's amazing, very excited. I got some type of just like sheets, curtains for now. I got this, uh, broomstick cut to size cut into the paneling and it just slides in and then the other one slides in over there um the tv works i took the inverter off because we're working on that thing in the back but i just had the inverter running to the front um but it's off right now i got this little nice fan and i got an android box with this awesome keyboard i want to teach you guys about that because it's pretty awesome you can play uh retro games on here you can put an sd card and watch downloaded movies you can watch showbox cody uh, Netflix, Spotify, whatever you want, internet, you can go on, your in on the internet if you want. Everything's there. And then in here is 
all of our things that you need when you go camping. Uh, paper towels, toilet paper, uh, cups, uh, utensils, napkins, baby wipes, you know, whatever you're going to need. It's all in there. As you can see, we haven't finished the molding down there. Um, the molding on top is still not completely finished. But, you know, little by little, everything works. We got a grill. We got chairs. Uh, that's the grill stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen yep, the step. That has to still be covered. You can see right here the insulation. That has to be covered, right? So there's still a lot of work. My dad got these sweet curtains. Uh, he cut it out, made it nice and long. This one right here. My van is broken, the handle's broken, like they all break. So I made a giant hole and I just reach in there with my finger. And that's how I open it on both doors. This one and, and that one back there. One more thing, back here I have this uh, mat that it's about uh, half an inch thick. It is uh, what you would find at your gym, your local gym. I have my tent down there. It's a six person pop up. And then I have a canopy right here. I have way more ideas. I'm gonna get one of those canopies that are on this side of the van on the outside. Um, but for now, that's what we have. And if anyone is doing a van, you need to have a fire extinguisher. If you're not doing a van, you need to have a fire extinguisher in all your cars. It is very important. If you're watching this and you're coming from like a camping van, you know, other channels, you don't know anything about cars or racing or any of that stuff. That's kind of what, part of what the channel is about. We deal with race cars all day, every day. I'm going to be building a motor. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow for another video. Um, we just, that's what we do. Fire extinguishers are everywhere and they're a must. Everyone needs to have one, two or three or five. We've, we've, we've evaded a lot of fires because of fire extinguishers. Look, there's one. I can see one on the shelf right there. If you look again, there's another one on the ground down there. I know there's another one back there. And here's another one back here. Fire extinguishers everywhere. They're very, you yeah, must have, don't forget it. This is my uh, drift car. Has a Corvette engine in it, V8. And uh, this is my other car, it's a daily. You just drive it to work and stuff. I'm, uh, that motor's bad, that's the new one. It's gonna get put together and it's going in there tomorrow. It's a Miata. Also, if you uh, have one of these vans, you should get lights. I got LED lights on both sides and they rotate so when you're camping to the side, it lights up. If you're in the back, it lights up back there. There's another one in the other corner. I gotta say from out here though, this van looks so good. Oh, it's so exciting. Awesome part about having lights in your van, they also help when you're working on your van. I'm gonna be getting two batteries currently that are uh, 100 amp hour uh, lead acid batteries and they are about, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I wanna say like 90 pounds each. That is really heavy, that's 180 pounds. That's what I weigh in that little thing. That's just two, in the future there's, there's room for two more. So that's another me, two of me inside that little compartment. Not including all the other devices that have to power everything. So make sure everything is really strong if you're gonna make this little compartment and your welds will hold, otherwise it'll fall down the road or something. Like it's probably gonna happen to me. My dad is in there, you can see that thing is holding his weight just fine. I've already cut all the metal, but I haven't welded the sides. I've only welded the bottom. I haven't welded the sides because he's working in here. And right there, he's doing a splitter from my two outlets. Basically, this outlet right here and that one back there, they run down the wall and over and down this wall to this uh, connector there where he's putting them all together into one wire. That one, that one wire is gonna come up to here. This is where our, our switch is gonna be. It's gonna be this box with a switch, and then we have the, the outlets, so that's the out, and these are the two ends. And we'll be able to switch between the inverter or shore power, and that's what's gonna power the outlets. Basically, what's gonna power the whole van. Um, as you've seen in the previous video, the batteries are gonna be in here, parallel the inverter, which I wanna talk about as well. I got this new GM Dell power inverter. I wanna try it, it's a modified sine wave. I don't know too much about it, 1200 watts. It, it, the best part about it is supposedly has a solar charge controller in the inside, it's, it's both, it's two in one. Which means that it has a pro and a con. Pro is you can just hook up solar panels to it and it starts charging, it's already hooked up to your batteries. The con is your uh, inverter is on when your charge controller is also on. Your inverter all, always is drawing uh, amperage, voltage, whatever. So 
you can't turn off the inverter and just use the solar charger to charge your batteries so it takes away a little bit of this charge to run the inverter because they're two in one yesterday the battery died so we're back i didn't get to record everything but we did stop uh, fairly early because the welding kind of took forever so my dad is finishing the second box right there it is where all three wires for the shore side are going to meet one side is shore other side is the outlet side where they meet in, into one wire so the way this is going to work is somewhat like this this is our van oh that's horrible this is where our stuff is and uh, our shore power is here we have an outlet here and another outlet here and uh, basically shore is going to go down to a box where it's going to meet with uh, our battery charger and then from there it goes to a switch and then right here this is the I don't know, hold on this is the switch switches look like this if you haven't seen one it's like a relay the outlets connect together oops up this way like that that goes to that part of the switch then the inverter so wait hold on this is our batteries power and negative the inverter is going to be in there somewhere too hooked up to the power and negative and then it's going to come to the other side of that switch like that and then basically when the switch is one way you're using shore power to power your outlets when the switch is the other way this is a switch it's like a relay click it clicks this way then now you're using your inverter to power your outlets then later in the future our inverter is also a solar charger but if you were to have a separate one that would also work too you'd have solar panels and then the solar panels you run the wiring down to your solar charger and that goes to your battery and that replenishes your battery that's a good way to do it I don't have solar panels right now what I'm gonna end up doing is there's a battery up here that's how your your van starts right then it's gonna be a line right here is going to be what's called a voltage sensing relay it's it's a relay that senses voltage after if it's above 13 volts which is the alternator that charges the battery um, if it's above 13 volts it, it connects the two banks if it is below 13 volts it separates the two banks what that does is when you turn your van off it separates the banks so this can start your van when you turn your van on it connects the banks and then the alternator which is over here the alternator charges both banks which is charging your batteries while you're driving and then at that point if you have to switch this way your alternator is through here that it's on and then it goes to the battery hold on to the battery and then what that's going to do is it's going to power your inverter which is going to power your outlets so your alternator is running your outlets at that point i know it's very confusing i'm going to explain a little more about the math behind it how you get the different voltages to wattage to uh, amperage i will explain all of that because amps changes depending on the voltage if it's 110 or 12 volt that we have we're using two different kinds here I'll get to that later. Um, for now, let's get back to working on this. Now you kind of sort of understand how the system's gonna work. I also want to explain that shore doesn't necessarily mean only connected to a house or a plug. It can also be connected to a generator if you were to have one. It's the same thing. It, I, th I believe the word shore probably comes from boats. I would assume a boat pulling up and plugging in, a sailboat or something, I don't, I don't know. We labeled all our wires, inverter, charger, and then that's where our switch is going to go so shore inverter and outlets um the two boxes are down there they're inside the frame rail one there and one here this is the like i said the shore power hookup for three wires which one goes to the charger the other one goes to the outside plug which brings the current in and the other one goes up here to that to that switch now that my dad's done with that i already welded the front one and the back one i just got to weld the two sides then he's, he's going to measure first so he could cut the wood that's going to go in there to insulate and uh, keep temperature away. And then we just have to paint it and then tomorrow we'll finish everything up. Then these batteries right here, these bad Johnnies from Walmart, 
They are 114 amp hours each. So that's two, what is that, 28? Um, that'll go back there. And then I also want to show you guys this. My dad just replaced this plug. I, I bought this one from Amazon. Uh, it's pretty cool because it has uh, obviously USB and the two plugs still. And then this right here is a light and all of this right here will light up. Uh, it's pretty cool because this will be going to the inverter. So if you are ever going to get home or get to your campsite and you don't want to leave the inverter running, you, you will see this light is on, which will tell you if your inverter is on or off. Specifically because our inverter is going to be hidden back here, which with the with the mat and everything down, you won't be able to get get to it and access it. So that'll tell you if it's on or off. We have one in right here at the black and two outs right here. So the in is going to be our out, which goes to outlet. And this side's going to be inverter, and this side's going to be shore. The way we're doing it, this, it, there's uh, three wires inside each one of these. Uh, power, positive, a what I call negative, but in house you call it neutral, I believe, and a ground. You're going to hook up all three grounds together. You're going to hook up all negative or neutrals together. And then the powers are going to be the ones that go to the switch, the black one. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions or comments like, oh, why is this exposed right here, Marco, on both sides? I don't understand. Well, there's gonna be lead acid batteries in here. Plus, there's gonna be a lot of heat. Inverter, charge controller, um, the solar charge controller, and the battery charger. It's all gonna be in here. Who knows what else we might end up putting in here in the future. But, heat rises, heat goes out that way. Also, we're gonna make a hole down there. Lead acid batteries, I believe when they leak or the gas that they emit or whatever actually is heavier, denser. So it, it goes to the bottom. So you need a hole at the bottom. It's gonna be over here. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. It's gotta be vented. You want this vented. You want the heat to go out. And uh, you also don't want it to vent into your van. You want it to vent outside. That's it, I told you, man. No. All right, it's all painted. I put a heavy, heavy, heavy coat just because we don't have time. We're back at my house. It's the next day. We're still working. My dad has been working on this. He worked a little bit uh, while I was at work. And then we just came back from Home Depot. I bought this DeWalt 4 amp waterproof charger. Um, I, I, I saw good reviews on it. I don't know. I'm going to try it. It's four amps, so it's not as uh, high output as other ones out there on Amazon that are like 10 or 12. Um, those will probably charge quicker. This is more of a trickle charge. I'm not looking for a fast charge because my van isn't necessarily My van isn't necessarily a camper van. My van is more of like a I'm gonna go to the track and then use it for the weekend then come back here and put it on the charger in the house So that can charge, you know for the whole week. Uh, it could charge overnight too, and that's plenty um, but if you are looking to charge like within hours or something like that, you're gonna want something a little better. My dad's been working on the battery tie down. He put all the metal in. This is secured and in. That is our 110 outlet. Um, this is, we made a hole there, got a little bar. There's a bend at the end there. Then it comes to here, there's a hole. We just gotta cut this now and then that's it. That'll hold the batteries down. Number one thing I've seen people do wrong is in camper vans especially, they get a battery or two and they put them in somewhere inside here, not in a secret compartment, but they just throw them in there and that's it. If you hit a bump, if you hit anything, anything on the floor level can actually bounce up, really anywhere, but that, that has more energy so it's gonna transfer, especially the further back from the axle it is. And uh, this is kinda low and further back, this will probably bounce, so it needs to be tied down. If you have any kind of batteries, they need to be tied down, but if you're doing it this type of way, they definitely need to be tied down. We got the inverter in, plug, it's just wired for there for right now. We we're trying to test if our switch right here is working and our lights. Put your hand on it, you can see the light works. That's how you know the inverter's on. Duke. Three different modes. We're gonna go test the TV over there so we can test that plug. Plug in the TV. Plug in our Android box. 
and there we go TV's working and we have light here Boop. in case you wanted that there I wonder what that looks like without our mood lighting it's pretty good turn that off one more this is my Android box I love it has a keyboard with a mouse touchpad anyways there's my mouse those are my apps um, if I go to files I have an SD card on it so if I go to files so somebody was watching the Avengers go back to home SD card okay I got games bunch of movies uh, let's see one of my favorite here Guardians of the Galaxy click that and now we're not even connected to the internet we can be because we're at my house but we could probably do a hotspot on your phone as well but without that you use your SD card and there you go one of my favorite movies of all time but that was just a test we know all of this works um, the lights are gonna get transferred to this wiring later right now they're still on the van wiring but this way when you use a TV and the Android box or the music we will not be wasting the front battery we will be using this battery um, I love that the inverter is working great it has a power button right here I'm probably gonna have to run somewhere up front over there because that's where you usually come in and we still have to put our charger right there that's going to charge the batteries through our 110 that we haven't brought in yet this is our shore plug uh, got it on Amazon. It's basically gonna go on the outside of the van and then when you open it you have this uh, Mail plug in there, but it is watertight when it is closed And that's how you will hook up 110 to charge your batteries and to use 110 for like the air conditioner and things like that I want to show you guys one more thing This I even downloaded this uh, Emulator so I can play all kinds of uh, Nintendo games Sega Super Nintendo and here I'll show you I have Contra Alright guys, it's the next day. My dad went to work, so I'm working on the van by myself. I've already done some stuff. I've been working out of excitement, you know, when you wake up and you're like, I'm almost done, I gotta do this. Battery's done, the trickle charger is already bolted on to the, to the wood. It comes up here, and that's gonna connect to there. I haven't done that yet. I drilled this hole and brought this in. This goes to here. This cable is gonna connect to this one. I have to explain this in a minute. I did uh, drill this right here. And I put my plug right there. Boop. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask me, why did you put it on the bumper? Why didn't you put it on either side, like an RV or other people do? I like it on the bumper for several reasons. Number one, uh, if you go to our campsite or at the track, which is what this van is for, uh, you don't know if the power is gonna be in that direction or this direction, and you usually can only park one way when you have a trailer and a race car. Number two, if the trailer is here, I'm gonna make a stand right here, because I can weld and stuff, for a small generator. So the generator will be right there. The wire will run right along the tongue to there, which works perfectly. That way we can use the Jenny if we are at the track and uh, we need to grind, cut, whatever we need to do. So right now I'm working on making the batter batteries parallel, which means that, that one's gonna go there. This one's gonna go here. Um, that is not really a red wire. That is a black wire. I wanted to tell you guys about this because everything about this, this van is budget, right? What I did was I bought one long black wire and I taped it with red tape so I know it's the red and I cut it and I spliced the, a new connector on it. Instead of buying two wires that cost way too much money, it's like seven or eight dollars each, you just buy one longer one 
for like eight dollars and then you cut it and splice it and there you go that's I'm just you got a pinch a penny everywhere you can I will be running my batteries in parallel which means the po power to power will are gonna be connected and ground to ground is gonna be connected uh, some people do run a six volt batteries these are 12 volt each uh, if you do that basically it turns it into one giant 12 volt battery it's like uh, this is 114 amp hours each one so it actually be like two whatever that is 28 amp hours um, but it's still 12 volt if you were to run the power out to your accessories the ground to the next power and then this ground out to your accessories you're turning them into a 24 volt which is, can be used as well it's just a smaller 24 volt it puts out more current but less uh, time less for a less period of time um, if you have two golf cart batteries, which a lot of people do purchase because they're cheap, they're six volt, you can, you would want to do, uh, that, like I'm talking about, you put it that way, ground to power, and then use this ground, and that would make it two big, uh, 12 volt batteries, or one big 12 volt battery. I'm done all that's connected the chargers connected to there that goes over that way now this looks a little confusing because I put this here and that black plug is this right here and you're probably wondering why does that just go into there and right there one I made this big hole also I wanted to tell you guys so that heat can uh, get out of there and obviously like I said the lead battery thing um, but the reason this is like this for now it's right here it's gonna go a breaker um, and that's gonna go right under here but the wiring is just I bought I bought this plug and just hooked it up to that instead of the breaker um, because I don't have the breaker yet and I don't necessarily know uh, which box I'm gonna use all the ones that sell at Home Depot are way too big for this area so I need to see if online there was a, a better one that was smaller uh, but I want to explain everything about this and voltage and I want you guys not to burn down your van, so I will be explaining in a minute. Um, you de you don't necessarily need a breaker, uh, but it is safe to have because you never know where you're hooked up, if their breaker's working or if they even have one at all. I'm going to hook the shore power on and see if our switch is working and if our uh, utilities are all going to work with shore power and then we can switch over to the inverter and see if our charger is charging the batteries and all that. All right, right away we can see the charger's on. It's saying charging, which is the yellow one. Fault is the one on the right in case there's an issue. And then the left one is full, so that tells us it's charging the batteries right now. They are in parallel, so it's charging both of them. I will check the voltage in that on a sec in a second. But here we go, TV's working. We got power to the outlets. <laughs> and our android box just turned on so everything's good now our inverter is off but i'm gonna hook up the wire and turn it on hit this right here that turns on our inverter which is pulled from the batteries and then right now it's on shore let's go to inverter and it's seamlessly Swat, swat, switches power to the inverter. Android box and TV stayed on. This is still on. But just so you know we're on the inverter, let's turn it off and see what happens. There we go, it turned off. Um, one more time. This switch is gonna be over by the door, so turn it on. And wait a minute. Sony, there you go, it's working. I'm back at the shop with Megan, and uh, this is the part that I know you guys are not gonna like because it's sorta of boring, but it is the most essential part in this video because you need to understand what kind of wiring you put in your van and what stuff you can use uh, with that wiring. So the gauge of the wire matters a lot and the amperage of your outlets and your switch or whatever you're using. First thing you guys probably know is watts, which is the total amount of energy transferred or used uh, between amperage and voltage. Amperage is the strength 
of, of the, the electricity. Voltage is the amount of electricity being transferred. So uh, we have 110 or 12 volts is what we're using. Right? Our maximum in the whole van because of the, the wire gauge is a 12 gauge and the wire and the, the outlets and that switch that we're using is 15 amps. That is the most you want to use on the 110 side. Using these three numbers, you can figure out the amount of watts that you can utilize total through that wire. My TV, for example, my TV says on the internet, it pulls like 30 watts total, but on the back of the TV, it says about 50 watts. So we're gonna use that number, it's 50 watts. I'm gonna use my trusty assistant to do the math. 50 divided by 12. 4.166667. Let's do 4.2. It's too late, it's 4.16. 50 divided by 110. 50 divided by 110. 0 0.4166667. So what this is telling us is on our 12 volt side, which is the inverter, we're pulling 4.16 amps. On our 110 side, of that inverter, we're pulling 0 0.41 amps. Also, if you're on shore power, which is uh, the back plug that I installed in the van, you're only pulling 0 0.41 amps from your house, from wherever you're at. Next, let's try the air conditioner I'm, I'm going to buy for the next video that I'm making of the van. It's gonna be a window unit, 5,000 BTU Frigidaire. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that in the next video, but here's the electricity side of it. According to the reviews on Amazon, someone actually tested the, the window unit to, so people like me would know. And at max everything, it draws about 371 watts. And uh, on startup, which is an easy start, it draws about 420 watts. So we're going to go with the 420 watts, even though it's not a constant. It is the maximum you will see through your wire. Assistant, how much? 420 divided by 12? 35. Exactly? Yeah. 35. 420 divided by 110. 3.8181818182. So as you can see here, we're pulling 35, 35 amps off our inverter, and we're pulling 3.81 3 amps off our uh, 110 side or shore power. Um, that is how much is pulling through that, that yellow wire that I installed, the 12 gauge wire, and our outlets that are on the, on the side of the van, and that switch that I installed to switch from one and the other. You don't wanna get above 15, and as a rule of thumb, you don't wanna use even, uh, you wanna use a maximum of two thirds of that uh, current. Why does our 35 amp on our 12 volt matter? That matters, because I am going to be testing in the next video that AC on our batteries, also on our alternator in the van. This tells us how much we're drawing. The alternator that I have, I believe, is 145 amps, and that's not at idle. At idle, might do 30, 45, I don't know. I have to measure it. That'll be for the next video. But that's how we'll know if my alternator is under load or stress with the AC. Um, that is for the 12 volt side through the inverter. Now, also, you need to know the 110 side because we're pulling 3.81 amps. You don't want to go above 10 amps. The TV is pulling another 0.5. And if you install a computer, that's going to pull a significant amount depending on your charger, how new the computer is and what kind of battery it has. But it could be about 3 amps as well. You, don't, you never know. That's, that's already 7. If you put two computers, me and Megan both hook up, we're reaching our limit there of our wire. This is why this is so important. If you put outlets in your van and you wire it like I did, you need to make sure you put use the right material. So I use that wire because my father had it and I'm going for cheap, but I also used it because it was 12 gauge, which can hold about 15 amp current. This is very essential in every band build and I've learned this through the race car builds and all that stuff. And in that, you don't want to put it too big of an amp um, that's going to draw a lot of power away, but you want just enough that's going to be able to be used for your electric water pump or big fans, depending on how much cooling you need, you know? So you learn from that side, I learned from that side of things, 
and from that I'm applying it to the van, which works out well. A lot of people, even me, until like two months ago, two months ago, I didn't even, I couldn't put th this together, this 110 side to 12 volt. Now I can because I already know the 12 volt side, and I can, if I can do the math to transfer it over to 110, I can figure out exactly what we need. So understand the safety aspects of the wiring that you're doing. Be careful. If you can't understand this, if you need help, ask for help. Do not just do whatever. That that square I made down there is wood. If if wires start to heat up in the wrong way and they're touching the wood, the wood can start catching and catching until it goes. You never know. So just be careful with what you're doing out there. This can get very confusing really fast also. Megan just uh, asked me because the 12 volt side, for example, the inverter. The inverter is using the battery, which has a 12 volt side, but it's also transferring that energy into 110. So you need to make sure your inverter is not passing that 10 amp li uh, limit on the, on the 110 side, but you also need to know that your inverter is not passing your alternator limit on the battery side, because that's what you're charging. So you have two different currents, 12 volt and 110, that you need to be aware of at all times. All the yellow wire I installed is gonna be running 110. The outlets are all 110, right? There is no 12 to the outlets. So the 12 is only to know how much you're drawing from the battery. When you install a solar charger and that charger is putting into the battery, uh, I don't know, 30 amps, then you know that your AC might be drawing more than 30 amps, five amps, so now your AC is a, a, equivalent to about five amps because that current that's being used just for the AC and not actually charging the battery. So you need to know that side of it. But also the AC is using that 110 side of the inverter, which means that if you connect the two computers, you're, you're also drawing, you're, you're getting uh, close to your threshold on that wire. If you run through this math and you do it to all the devices you're gonna be running through uh, van or build, then you will, won't have an issue. Just make sure you don't just guess and start plugging things in. Um, that's why I'm putting a breaker in too. The breaker should help eliminate this uh, it's more, it's a safety. It should help eliminate somebody that's not me plugs in something, then the breaker should click. As far as price, uh, I had to spend some money on the material, the steel to, to weld around that uh, that cubby there. And the everything else I kind of purchased on Facebook Marketplace and here and there, I, I, I don't think I purchased, well, I purchased the charger new, the battery charger from Home Depot for $50, Dewalt. The other stuff I purchased on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap. Um, but I will put some links below of the same things you would need if you were going to build a compartment like this or even if you were just going to do a uh, inverter and charger and batteries uh, in your camper van. I told you guys this part of the video is going to be boring, but it is very essential. You need to know uh, electricity and you need to understand it if you're going to do it yourself. And even if you're not going to do it yourself, then you need to understand it so you don't burn your stuff down. Yeah, this, inclu this includes your house, your car, whatever. If you add lights to your car, your Jeep, a lot of people do that. You need to know what you're doing. Um, this is going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys for liking, watching, subscribing. Stay tuned. We're going to be putting an AC in the window unit. I haven't seen any videos of people actually testing after they install it, testing it on batteries and seeing how much it'll draw from one battery of 100 amps or two batteries or like have an actual formula of this AC that I have through these wires pulls this much and lasts this long in this square footage. Obviously, there's a lot of other variables, which includes uh, where you live, I live in Florida, how hot it is outside, and then the type of insulation you use and how much insulation, how deep the insulation is, the R value. So there's a lot of value, uh, there's a lot of variables to it, but I think my video is gonna be pretty good. I'm excited for it. I think my two batteries are gonna run the AC a lot longer than the whole internet is telling me. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing. Goodbye.